actually click the uh, click the uh, the hashtag on Twitter. Um, it's pretty much what it promised. So you know, we figured. Listen, I know our audience. I know everyone loves boobs, and I know our audience loves boobs. So this is some fine looking boobs right there. Beautiful <laughs> boobs. Beautiful boobs. And in fact, I wouldn't mind uh, a couple of boobs like this. Um, I never seen. Um, I've never seen these blue-footed boobs uh, before, Ken. Were you aware of these uh, boob boob birds uh, before? I've never heard of boobies. No, I don't yeah, know. What that's not. That's are. what they are. Yeah. They're, they're boobs. Yeah. They're, that's what they yeah. call these little uh, great-looking birds. They're like little mini ducks <laughs> or something. Like they're, they're super great cool. feet. I oh, want yeah, they're them. great colors. I want them. Yeah. They're, they are cool. Yeah. What are they? Part like they like part swan, part duck. Part, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, that's, that's boobs. <laughs> Paul Bowie's a boob expert. He'll join us and uh, he'll break it down. <laughs> I saw he'll Clam run. Chowder on Twitter. I was like, he's like, National Boob Day. I was like, yeah, go, okay, we're ready to rock. <laughs> yeah, Chow, 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 yeah, Chow, Chowder's mind's in the gutter. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I, I'm dead serious, though. I've never seen these uh, cool-looking birds never. before. Very, very oh, cool. cool. Actually, you know what? Let's play. Let's play the. Uh, as long as we're on this now, well, get get it up uh, here, Matt. The uh, the TBT. We're talking about a blue collar. You Buffalo gets it done. Buffalo yes, uh, yes. rolls. Uh, Buffalo rolls, and we were talking about getting the money after. So each team, each team does it differently, right? Like some teams will take a salary before and give up a cut, like Floyd Mayweather can, like he funds the team type of thing. Mm -hmm. Like he gets the million dollars. Like they, you know what I mean? Like these sort of, yeah. some teams are on salary. Some teams like have a shorter bench. Some teams like split it up differently. So um, here is blue collar you getting paid after the game. And uh, here he is, $85,000 uh -oh. a player. Mm -hmm. Refresh, refresh. No, matter of fact, I'm going to go to my phone. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, baby. How it look, baby? How it look, baby? That bitch is worse. Ah! Your black side goes stupid. Stupid. It's nice. Enjoy this $85,000. It's nice. It's $85,000. These guys are going wild. Guys are winning $85,000. On the PGA Tour, or whatever, to make the cut. Oh well, another day, whatever. It's nice to see these guys enjoy it, or some of these guys making millions all the time. Gabe, that's cool, man. Very cool. Well, they're playing for the love of the game and the sport, and uh, exactly, it's nice to see. Great moment there. Shout out to our AM Radio affiliates. I am Gabe Morenci. We're breaking it down. Countdown to kickoff is on. NFL preseason begins tomorrow night. And uh, there's been a ton of line movement as far as the total in this football game is concerned. And as far as the side, Paul Bovey will join us. We'll talk some NFL uh, football. We've got uh, Major League Baseball tonight. Coach James Young will join us. We'll break down the late WNBA game. Dave Sharapan out. George Kurtz in. We'll break yeah. down uh, Major League Baseball card um, with, with George Kurtz uh, this evening. I, uh, I do have a question to ask, Morency. I know we're going to talk totals with Paul. As you did your Cleveland Browns nine and a half under, and that story broke today, did they void that bet? It's voided, right? That was, that was my, the question I need to know, like because things are going to change. My bet, my bet is not voided. Oh, they left it. Well, that was because well, well, he, he gets a year. Oh. Holy oh, wait, wait, geez. Wait, 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 wait. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? <laughs> okay. No, honestly, I can't. That's great news. No, no, I was no, thinking that. Like, I was wondering. No, 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 no. Where'd no. get it I got I to be honest with you. You're catching me. I'm as off guard as Alex Jones was in court today. Oh. This is one of the most fascinating <laughs> court scenes in the history of the world. Do you know that we have two years of your text messages and you see his face? Uh, what? <laughs> like, uh, I'm caught off guard here, Cap. As you stated, so the NFL is appealing this, right? I don't know what the hell. Yeah. yeah, well, you know what, Cam? Yeah, I'm glad you bring this up, actually. So, dude, what the hell? Like, what the hell What's was the point, the of, point Robinson? of going to a federal time. judge yeah. and agreeing to go to a third party when Roger Goodell now just says, you know what? I'm the new judge. Ooh. Exactly. You said it was a waste said, of time. wasting money, time, money. Everybody, like, what are you, what are these guys? That no, no, this is, he's going to start a war with the players' union. 
You know what? Oh, it's Deshaun over now. Watson's not an angel here, but you agreed to this. We went to an arbitrator. Like, it's done. Trust me. Like, even me, I don't even like Deshaun kids. Watson. And I'm like, it's done, Cam. Like, well, now, like, what was the point of this? What was, you know was the happy? point of the whole trial? Your account's going to be happy if he's gone for a year, bro. How's that nine and a half? When he, if he gets a year, that thing's going to go to seven and a half. Trust me, like man. I can't way. believe that. Yeah. Well, all right. All right. Let's see. Let's see. I'm looking right now. Let's see. Suspense at the break. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast the to BBG, coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game yeah, live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. Again, you're just building pieces right now, and you have the benefit of having a pretty nice lead, but the Astros are right there trying to get that one seed. That one seed is gigantic. i got to give baseball credit. They changed that to give the one seed a buy. Now you don't have to play that first-round scary three-game series, and you can set up your pitching rotation however you want with home field advantage throughout. Mm -hmm. It's huge. The Bostonian versus the book. Pharrell, coast to coast. On Soto, going to Ugh. the Padres. Look out, a massive deal. Josh Bell would probably be the number two guy on the market in terms of a power hitter that was available. Go figure, he moves to San Diego along with Soto at 23, the most dangerous man in baseball with the most dangerous lethal bat in baseball. The Sports Grid Network. Sports professor Rick Haro on Southern 1.3 trillion dollar business of sports with your daily numbers game. Gambling and the NFL, well, it's preseason, Gillette Stadium, but everybody is fit in the same process. How to generate more and more revenue. Remember the TV deal through 2032 at the NFL level, $111 billion, about $330 million per team. Imagine getting a check in the mail for $330 million. I can't, but league owners can, certainly. Gambling gonna be a major part of that. 90% of all of us will be able to gamble remotely by 2025, a PricewaterhouseCoopers study. And most important for the next generation, the 12 to 17 year olds, 97% say they're sports fans. How? Keep them interested, competitive products and gambling down the road. Certainly, this is a step in the next direction and certainly the NFL has cornered the market. Sports professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game. Uh, let's do this thing. It's game time decisions. Kicking it with the raging redhead uh, Cam Stewart, who's rock, rocking his um, which uh, which golf shirt is this? Cam, is this the Adidas? Is this the this the the what does this represent? This one out of out of, out of uh, yeah. It's I got not. The this gray. isn't the Marlins. The yeah, not, yeah. What is? Yeah, which one's this? Yeah, it's more Blue Jays. Kind of light light blue. It's it's Callaway. Callaway is the uh, is the one. Uh, dry dry nice, nice dry weed. Yeah, yeah, it's very. You know what it is, Retsy? It's that thin stuff because you know I sweat a lot. I I can't handle the heavy cotton. Oh, that's a good call. I, I, I sweat nice. a lot. Some yeah. of them are very breathable. Yeah. Huh? 
Yeah, that's the thing. That's why I wear them too, not just for my mic, but I like the breathable fabrics of the new uh, golf shirt. Like, I love our sports grid shirts, but they're pretty heavy. Like, I went, I went for a walk in that thing in 40 degree heat. I was sweating pretty bad. Like, I was, these ones a little, little bit thick. lighter. You know, a little yeah, thick. a little thick. It could, yeah, I need the I need the sports grid dry fit. You know, the the thinner material, lighter material. I'm going with the uh, it's the Vancouver uh, Canucks uh, rookie camp uh, going on camp. So I got the yeah, t-shirt. it's nice. Oh, nice. Looks, with the whistle. Let's go, let's go. Mike let's go, guys. Ben. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, hey, Bester. Yeah, yeah, just because yeah, you got yeah. it, prove it. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Hey. Yeah. No off season yeah. here, guys. Bad, we hey. make the playoffs yeah. last year. Let's go. Hey, Demko. <laughs> no sleeping on the job, Demko. Let's go. <laughs> Let's bring in Paul Povey. Uh, Never sleeps on the job. He's ready to no, go. Paul Paul's ready. Yes, he What's is. going on, Paul? He looks good. I'm ready to roll, guys. I'm ready to roll here. What's going so, on? Paul, How you doing? Um, we uh, we got a question for you. Actually, uh, we think uh, is this is this someone that's related to you? Because I swear to God, if you grew a beard and wore a Kiss T-shirt and hung around Yankee Stadium, and please tell me you, you know at- this guy somehow. Like uh, like this guy. He he looks like you know what I mean. You, you know this guy? He's got a little bovey in him, actually. Like, you know what I mean? He's got a little bovey in him. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe. I, I, I could see the resemblance. But yeah, I'm figuring, like, okay. you got like you got a cousin or something that works in the rock industry or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's like, a roadie. This guy might be related to, to bovey. I got cousins all over, man. I got cousins all over. So, hey, you never know. It's fine. <laughs> I love this guy in the kiss shirt. It was like you just see the other thing. He's reading like a horse form or something. Paul, we could tell a menu, a form. Like, yeah, I don't know. We can't that. figure out what he's reading, but yeah, never yeah, yeah, he's, like, he's, well, he's into it. All right. Well, yeah, we'll ask Kurtz about. We gotta ask Kurtz when he comes on about the guy in the kiss. Yeah. Shirt. Him. Say, Good was he call. loud? Good Did he call. say anything? Yeah. Did he? What, was he sleeping? Did he smoke one? Yeah, yeah exactly. Did he fall tell he definitely looks like he smells like weed. Like this is a guy. He definitely smoked one yeah. in the parking lot walking in. Oh, the big time! One hundred percent. He's hardcore OG strain, heavy yeah. indica. <laughs> All right. Judging by looks, he needs to smoke some sativa. he would be a little more awake. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, like he's Tony La Russa. Yeah, this guy, he's getting a hit with yeah, a ball. Yeah. Uh, Tony La Russa nodding off in the first thing. Oh, the game started. It's like me on flights, like leaving Vegas. My head sort of yeah. It's like well, that's no, La Russa. We're, we're, we're uh, all right, all right, Paul. So uh, let's do this, uh, Paul. Cam asked a very good question. So Deshaun Thank Watson, you. let's. I'm sick of Deshaun Watson. I'm sick of all this. I'm I sick too. of vaccination talk. I'm sick of like suspension and appeals. I just want to play football and watch and bet on football. But I put a thousand dollars on the Cleveland Browns yesterday, live on the air, under nine and a half. And I said, Paul, I don't even care if Deshaun Watson played the whole damn season. I don't think they win ten games this team this year. Their schedule is a killer. It's an absolute killer. And now Roger Goodell says that they are appealing. And I got to be honest with you, I didn't realize that he got to appeal to himself after all of this. So, well, I don't know. What the hell's going on here? Like, Goodell is clearly... And the thing is, he ain't, you can't beat them. He, they've got billions and billions and trillions of dollars. Yep. They'll just say, let's go to court. Have fun with that. Exactly. Right? I, play golf. I play golf with the judge. Have fun. Right, like you know what I'm saying? And we've got deeper pockets than you. We can outlast you, and you're the one that's gonna be on the sidelines forever. So have fun suing us. I don't know what the hell's going on, but all I know is my bet is in Cam and it's locked in. It's accepted. Wow. It's in. It's in. That's wild. I gotta be I thought Paul, like I thought they'd void that thing because that's based on a six game suspension. You got it in. You know, good Al, he could be the boss. That's why it was good to get it in right away, Cam. Yeah, play around. That was really Boom. smart. You know what? That was a that was a really smart thing to do, bro. That was very bright. And they what do you think, Paul, that, of this Browns nine and a half and the situation? I'm certain, I am certain that's going to stand because that was always hanging in the balance. There was never a definitive six game suspension. There was always the overhang over an appeal, and they put that up there, knowing that. So you have to feel that this is going to stand. I cannot see them taking this down. Futures bet, and would they take down the division bets? Uh, I I don't see it happening. This is going to the chips fall where they may. If you got the Browns under and he goes to a season, you got a great bet. And if you got him over, you're screwed. And um, for the record, they are still up. They are still up right now. 
So it's still up to him. But, bro, it's up to 170 right now to the under. That's why I said, I was like, dude, like, it's a wrong number. It should have been eight, eight and a half. Like, it's, it's, it's ambitious for this team to win 10. What do you think of the total now, Paul? Forget about, like, the suspensions all this. Whatever, dude. There's We know he ain't playing for the first six games for sure. Now it might even be more after. What do, what do you make of this, Paul? Well, well, I have some confidence in Brissett, and they, they definitely strengthened their team. They have the best offensive line out there. You can make a case for that, and I don't think it's disputable. So – I, I definitely think they have a chance to go over. Is it something I was interested in playing either way? No, but some books did remove it from the board. So that would suggest to you that the other books were willing to take the chance and run with it and just put it up for better or worse. So I, I don't think that that's coming down. And as far as the over under on the uh, win total, I'm just going to take a pass on it. I like the Bengals in the division. I think they did the most. They brought over offensive linemen. They got the three-headed monster at receiver. They got arguably one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback, along with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen in the AFC. And they got a running game. So I, I don't see a lot of weakness in the Bengals, and I like them to win the division either way. I don't have a problem with the the Bengals winning the division. The odds have come down. They were plus. They were. It was like plus two forty, plus two. I think it was plus two thirty before. Cam, who do you have winning that division? The Baltimore Ravens are plus one sixty. Bengals are plus one eighty. Not a lot of value with the Bengals now at plus one eighty, but it is what it is. It, it is what it is. I, I think, as you know, I, I don't really think uh, the Ravens are a team that I think got very very lucky. I'm not sure exactly how good you they are. You two are uh, both we'll presidents see. of the Baltimore Bash Ravens. We are. No, no, no. I, no, Bo, I don't mean Bo to be no, like, I'm more. I am guilty of it. I, I just see regression from Jackson. <laughs> I'm not sold on their team. They won a lot of lucky games last year. Like, I just don't believe in the Ravens. They, their secondary got torched. Sure, they get some guys back, but the Bengals are a better team than them. Cleveland can play with them. I don't know. Me and Paul, we didn't even talk about this stuff, Marenzi, but I'm with them. I, I think the Ravens are highly overrated. Every year, I think their win total is too high. We I thought I agreed. Ridiculously high. I agreed with you last year. I think the Ravens are being slept on this year. Well, they lost a lot of receiver, man. They don't have much depth there. A Duvernay and Bateman. Oh, I'm not going to dispute that. Okay. And then you got one of the running backs coming off an ACL. Uh, Lamar Dobbins. Jackson. Since yeah, they that got Dobbins 30... back. Dob Dobbins will be fine. Okay. 36 and 6 in his inaugural season, uh, Lamar Jackson was. And since then, it's, I'm not going to say it's been in free fall, but it's been on the decline. So he's got to step up and show me something that he's a quality quarterback. Remember, a few years ago, he was playing a three tight end offense. It's a lot easier to throw uh, eight yard passes to the tight end and let him run after the catch than it is to throw the ball downfield. I got to see more out of Lamar Jackson to prove he is a top flight quarterback in the league. He won the MVP I, of, I of, the, of the league. Talk to me about today. Talk to me about today, not yesterday. One thing I will say I do agree with is that there, I don't understand why they don't get a better wide receiver. He's 37 and 12 to start. With. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. 
What's your story? The morning after. How do you evaluate Cleveland's team win total for 2022? You know, I start as we should with those six games. And you that is a lot of times you talk about win totals. That might paint the picture. If you feel like the Browns can go four and two in those six games, you're easily going to push the over, right? Because you're going to ask Deshaun Watson to go basically 500 in the games that he can play, and you assume he'll do better than that. I don't know about four and two. You know, I think three and three is certainly more optimistic. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. This is a federal crime. He will lose his team. If there's any evidence, what you're telling me is if there's any evidence, recording, email, or the like, that can show that this conversation happens, because clearly it happened. But I wasn't I wasn't serious. The investigation clears that it happened. The conversation about throwing games to Brian Flores from the owner happened. The Bostonian versus the book. Fantasy Sports Today. So CJ Abrams was a former first round pick of the Padres. He could obviously play the infield, he could play the outfield. I think really the key name in this as far as their offensive future for the Padres is Robert Hassel the third. James Wood, I believe, is also a top 20 prospect for the Padres. And the reason why it feels a little bit light is because the Padres are just like kind of getting Josh Bell as like a throw in. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Syndergaard goes to the Philadelphia Phillies. So the Angels send Syndergaard back to the National League East, where, of course, Scotty, he will face his old team, the Mets, quite a bit. He will not start for the Angels tonight. A couple more that just went down. The Yankees send Jordan Montgomery to the St. Louis Cardinals for outfielder Harrison Bader. Oh, I uh, love so Bader. Bader to the Yankees. The Sports Grid Network. Game Time Decisions continues. I am Gabriel Moretzi, Paul Bovey in the house. The Razor Red Hat Cam Stewart throwing it down uh, with us. We're talking NFL futures uh, right now. Just talking about the Baltimore Ravens. And listen, I'm not the president of the Baltimore Raven fan club. And I'm not running to the window to bet uh, them to win the division at plus 160. But at the same point in time, I do think that it's a, I think it's a two, two horse race in this division. And I think it is Baltimore and Cincinnati. I think I think um, I think Harbaugh is a great coach. If you look, you know Paul, and they were they were just absolutely devastated with injuries over the last couple of years and retirement. They got a little old on the defensive side of the football. Their secondary was always beat up. I get. I, I'm not going to dispute the wide receiver stuff, and I never understand it, Cam, why the Baltimore Ravens don't get wide receivers, bro. I don't get it. Right. It's, 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 his entire career. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm the one that always says, Mark Andrews. People talk about Mark Andrews like he's the greatest, like he's like the greatest tight end ever. I'm like, come on, man. Like, you don't, he doesn't have anyone to throw the ball to ever, which is baffling. They're hoping Bateman is the guy this year, uh, Paul. But I, they're still, they're still a double digit win football team. And for the record, as I stated, we're going into the break. Lamar Jackson has played in 49 games, he's 37 and 12 as a starter. So we could talk about this and that and all this other stuff. Well, go out there and stop them because not a lot of teams do, Paul. Look, man, um, he, he's, as I said, he's been in decline. Let's let's reflect back on those Bengal games last year. Do you remember what Joe Burrow did to that secondary? I don't think they're in Cincinnati's league at this point. So maybe it will be a two uh, a two dog race. But I think that eventually Cincinnati will distance themselves from the field. I'm not sold on the Ravens. I'm not sold on his accuracy. The problem is he got injured last year, and I think he's been too reliant on his ability to run the football. So, you know, quarterbacks evolve. And if they don't evolve, the game catches up to them. If you run in place, you're running, you're, 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 if you're in place, you're falling behind in the NFL because it's almost as if the league has caught up with Lamar Jackson. The Bills and Titans had a perfect scheme for him. Uh, that's the thing. A lot of those teams will look at those tapes where he got absolutely murdered, 
And uh, like, remember that game, game against the Bills. Obviously, you do. Yeah, like, that's in a just, playoff game. Like, it is. That's you can't it, take hits like that though anymore. He's not a real like. He's a thin, wiry, shifty, very talented runner that has taken a lot of hits. And teams are starting to come up with better complex game plans to stop him because they see more tape of him all the time. Anyway, he we'll, we'll see. It's he, I, he needs he, those receiving weapons. Are Look, last year, last year was a train wreck for the Ravens. Right, everything went wrong yeah. for them on a weekly basis. And he's, he played 12 games. There were seven and five. There were a lot of interceptions. He had a bad year last year, without a doubt. He was 16 he touchdowns, 13, uh, 13 interceptions by his standards. But he's also trying to make things happen, throwing the ball to nobody as well. I would have liked to, to see him address the wide receiver uh, position. Hell, at this point, bring Odell Beckham in. Uh, bring anybody in, somebody, something. To, to give him something to throw the football to. But we'll see if Bateman, you know, Duvin Ray is who he is. It's not like suddenly he's going to get better. I guess it's going to be a heavily ground a ground attack. Their defense has to be better uh, this year. Like I said, I haven't pulled the trigger on the Ravens to the over, but I'm just stating I think this their demise is um, is a little premeditated. All right, Paul, have you, you know put what? anything in? All right, what's that? Oh, I think a uh, huge key on the left tackle that has not played much the last uh, year and a half. And if he gets back in the lineup and he's healthy, that will definitely make life easier on him. Now, on to your next question, Gabe. All right, hold on. Let me just get as we're here. So, like, yeah, like, put it this way. The Raven win total yeah. is 10 and a half right now. It's 10 and a half. That's high. It's a little high, Cam. Like, yeah, to me, yes. like, if it was nine and a half, like, to say, oh, yeah, they're going to win 11 games for sure. Like, that's why I'm saying I don't like it. But as yeah. you see, the odds makers are showing them respect coming into this year. That's true. That's very true. They were even crazier numbers last year. I just, it's just funny. How I think Cincinnati it was 11 and a half last year even. Yeah. yeah, that's why it could be under. It was like, I'm telling you, man, it's like, it's it's like, wow, they talk about these guys like they're like a superior, like they're a good team. They're not, they're not a, like 11 wins is very ambitious, I think. What about the Bills? Make- well, sorry, Paul, you wanted to say something too, and I'll ask you about the Bills yeah. after. What, were you going to yeah. jump in there, Paul? Oh, no, no. All I was going to say, well, I, I said what I was going to say, but I'll also say that you made a good point before. Uh, John Harbaugh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, 137 and 88 in his career, uh, discounting the preseason record, which he's been off the charts. Which is impeccable, he, yeah. <laughs> he is a winning coach. And, and, it, and it's hard to go against a guy that has that kind of pedigree. It'll be hard to go on the eight and a half wins with New England, but I think it's top heavy at ten and a half if you can get it, which I did. Ten and a half is too much. You're asking them to win eleven games in a competitive division, and I understand the Steelers are probably not going to do very well this year because of their offensive line, uh, the quarterback situation. But they're still a threat. They could still beat the Ravens in one of those two football games. They're just not going to have any cushy spots. Buffalo Bills win total. Speaking of 11 and a half is 11 and a half. Cam, what do you, what do you make of that too high to pull the trigger on the Buffalo Bills here? I'm going to, I got to be honest with you, Gabe. And I love you. I love you, man. You're my guy, but this Buffalo Bills, like for them to go out and win 12 games. So what we all like Miami, they're getting better. New England, the jets, like there's a lot of improvement in that division. I'm not saying Buffalo is not an elite team. But to go out there and win 12 games, really, I think that's I, I think it's a little bit high. I think they get 11. I think it's close to the number. I would actually go under with the Buffalo Bills. Sorry, Bills Nation. I like you guys, too. Like, I'm a Seahawks fan. My team sucks. Like, we're one of the worst teams in the league. I'm just saying the Buffalo Bills asking them, and we're a division where all the teams are getting better, maybe not New England, but, you know, Mac Jones is another year under his belt, and Bill Belichick always seems to find a way to be respectable. I think it's asking a lot, Renzi. 12 wins is a lot of damn wins. That's all. Are you are you buying or selling the hype uh, with Bills Mafia this year, Paul? I'm buying it. I think they have the best team in the AFC. And mind you, you know I'm on the Dolphins over the eight and a half, but they have absolutely destroyed New England. I think they beat them seven out of the last eight games that they haven't been close. Uh, and, and they're just too good offensively at this point. They've They've added weapons. And they've done what they needed to do, and that is strengthen the offensive line, plucking those two guys from Tennessee. Uh, I think that's going to be huge. I I just think they have too much. I'm not going to step in front of the train. I'm not going to go over 11 and a half just because it's a high number. 
and there's not much margin for error there. But And it is a competitive division. The Jets will be better. They're not going to beat the Bills. New England lost too much. You know, they have the top payroll uh, in the wide receiver position. They don't have one of them in the top 50. I don't know what Bill Belichick is doing when it comes to picking, drafting wide receivers, but he doesn't do a very good job. He might as well hire one of you guys because you guys could definitely uh, top his what he's doing over there. I take it as an insult. Cam says thank you. I'm like, wow. Well, sort of well, sort of well, yeah, sure. Even you, even you guys. I've said it a million even times, Paul. Bill Belichick is a, is one of the greatest coaches of all time. He's one of the worst GMs of all time. He thinks he yeah, can win he with anybody. Really it's his ego. He yeah. thinks one of these guys, well, I won with this guy before. Yeah, you won because you had Tom Brady, bro. Right? It wasn't exactly. like you, you were some genius. Even you at the draft, I mean? now, like they draft a guy yeah. who should have been a third-round oh, yeah, pick. It's exactly like, ooh, I'm going to be different than everybody. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing, bud. You want to be the smartest yeah. guy in the room? Yeah, Actually, yeah, if the you guy really was look at the last 67th, couple of years. and they took him 28th. It's like, all right. I know. I understand work, you, guys. Him, you took him three <laughs> rounds too early. Like, come on. Yeah, you could have gotten him. Yeah, yeah. You you could have been the guy, but you could have got him later. You didn't have to make that point. You could have got somebody better and still got him. But that's Bill. They got two guys. They got two guys. Okay, who are going to kill their salary cap this year? Who are barely going to play in Aguilar and John U. Smith? John U. Smith had hands of stone. I watched this guy, and I lost. <laughs> receiving props. I mean, he is the he is the Roberto Duran in the NFL, and he was dropping passes last year like crazy. If you look too, they signed all these players last year, and they sort of signed just sort of average guy, like whoever's available. Yeah, to sign now. Like you know, all right, <laughs> take, yeah, yeah, sign. I'm sure. Right, okay. Like, and they break, and then they throw the guy under the bus after. I think the Mac Jones hype is way way overrated, uh, way overrated as well. Buffalo's schedule is tough. One thing about Buffalo. They're going to be favored in every football game they play in. As evidence, look, they're favored against the Rams on the road in week one against the defending Super Bowl champion. So, you know, they're going to be favored all the time. Can they live up to it? It's going to be tough. But I tell you, Kevin, I think, I think they can get to 12-5, and five, Paul. Like, back to this, it's a manageable number. I think Good the number. Bills are actually – I think they're a 13-4 and four team this year, guys. You I can know, see the Bills won. losing like one game a month only, like three and one, three they and won. one, three and one. Type you got to admit, you got to admit, Marenzi, that's a good number though. Like you think 12, 11 and a half, like you, they're going to get even action on the under and on the over with betters. I think. I think it's a very good number that they post. What do you think, very Paul? Strong. You know, they lost all their one-score games last year. If they had won those games, if you flip the script, and those are the kinds of things which turn around. It's like turnover ratio. If you have a negative turnover ratio. Uh, some, you know, a lot of times that plays in in the succeeding year because if it balances out, you're going to get improvement. And I think Buffalo will get improvement in those close games and they'll win a few of those. And it's, I think you see it get 12 to 13 win team here. I agree. I agree. Um, all right. Hang in here, Paul. We'll get uh, your take on the Hall of Fame game. Then we'll get you out of here. We'll just talk a little preseason football. Uh, Cam? Marlins and Reds for the 313th time uh, this evening. Who you got tonight? I parlay. <laughs> what is this? A six game series. I know. Hey, Marlins and Mets, everybody, every day, every night. Let's go. Yeah, I got them parlayed with the Mets. <laughs> Meet the. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. 
What's your story? The morning after. How do you evaluate Cleveland's team win total for 2022? You know, I start as we should with those six games. And you that is a lot of times you talk about win totals. That might paint the picture. If you feel like the Browns can go four and two in those six games, you're easily going to push the over, right? Because you're going to ask Deshaun Watson to go basically 500 in the games that he can play. And you assume he'll do better than that. I don't know about four and two. You know, I think three and three is certainly more optimistic. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. This is a federal crime. He will lose his team. If there's any evidence, what you're telling me is if there's any evidence, recording, email, or the like, that can show that this conversation happened, because clearly it happened. But I wasn't I wasn't serious. The investigation clears that it happened. The conversation about throwing games to Brian Flores from the owner happened. The Bostonian versus the book. Fantasy Sports Today. So C.J. Abrams was a former first-round pick of the Padres. He can obviously play the infield. He can play the outfield. I think really the key name in this as far as the offensive future for the Padres is Robert Hassel III. James Wood, I believe, is also a top 20 prospect for the Padres. And the reason why it feels a little bit light is because the Padres are just like kind of getting Josh Bell as like a throw-in. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Syndergaard goes to the Philadelphia Phillies. So the Angels send Syndergaard back to the National League East, where, of course, Scotty, he will face his old team, the Mets, quite a bit. He will not start for the Angels tonight. A couple more that just went down. The Yankees send Jordan Montgomery to the St. Louis Cardinals for outfielder Harrison Bader. Oh, I uh, love so Bader. Bader to the Yankees. The Sports Grid Network. Game time decisions continues. I am Marenzi. Kicking it. Cam Stewart, Paul Bovey in the house here. Sex M Channel 159. Shout out to all of our television affiliates uh, tuning in right now and AM radio affiliates. So, uh, Cam Marlins are minus 215. Alcantara against uh, Mike Minor. Total is low at six and a half. I just put in a play on Alcantara over seven and a half strikeouts at plus 100. What do you have for this game? Yeah, I just I like the Marlins. I don't want to take them on the run line, Gabe, because I don't know how many runs they're going to score. But Alcantara has been absolutely fantastic, and I agree with your over strikes. He's he's basically a one man gang for these guys. He just keeps on delivering every time he goes out there. Be nice if these guys gave him some damn run support. Six and a half is too low for me to take the under uh, in that game as well. So I I would agree with you. I would not be surprised if he had like nine or ten strikeouts today. Uh, uh, play any baseball tonight, uh, Paul? I did not. I did not. Um, all NFL coming up and still putting in futures. All right. So speaking of the NFL, the Hall of Fame game, in a little more than 24 hours' time, it's here. And um, the, the betters have not waited to attack this thing. Dear God, the total is now 29 and a half. Opened at 33 and a half, uh, Paul, all the way down to 29 and a half. And we were talking about, you know, what are the key numbers? Is it 30 and a half? Like, thing is, in the preseason, you know, the, the teams go for two often. Like, there's not – it doesn't play out like a regular season game. But this is the lowest total that I could ever recall in a, in a, in a Hall of Fame game. And, in fact, this might be the lowest total ever in an NFL game, like preseason or regular season. Well, remember the Bears and the Giants outdoors, Paul? You might have been at the game. Um, was the, uh, the – yeah, the total was so low in that game, yeah. in the playoff well, wait, game. Man. Oh, you mean in '86? Yeah. Or '80? 80... Yeah. No, when the uh, yeah, when the when uh, Sean Landetta missed the ball when he went to punt the ball and missed it. Oh, I don't... <laughs> what was it? it? Was like thirty to nothing, or was what was the final score? <laughs> They shut everybody out in the playoffs. They shut the Rams, the Giants. It was cold out. as hell at the Meadowlands. It was cold as hell. And it was the greatest defense ever type of deal. And I remember, I was like, wow, total's like 33 or oh, something. Oh, the Giants were home. Okay, the Giants like, were home then. Yeah, I the Giants were at I, home. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember. You like to top Marv well, Levy with your giant T-shirts all the time and pictures and stuff, but like, no, nah, no, nah, you don't. <laughs> Funny how he doesn't remember the Bears kicking their ass. Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> you like to wear your tight T-shirts. <laughs> I remember the Bears. But, Kicking their ass in like in yep. the eighties, and Sean Landetta missing the football. He threw it up to punt it, and he just missed it. I think the wind, took it. Yeah, I think the wind took yeah, it. Yeah, right off the right <laughs> off the foot. Just, yeah, that that Meadowlands wind. Yeah, no, there's a picture of Bovey with a giant T-shirt. He's got a picture with Marv Levy. No, he looks Giants good. I remember, remember the last time he came on, Gabe, he was all buff with his Super Bowl shirt. Like that's the thing. Like nobody has the same size shirt from that time to gr a grown man adult. <laughs> Except for Paul Bowden, because he takes care of himself. Got a hand hey, I still got some. Oh, the t shirt my... in such good shape, too. Like, I know. Well, you're right. Like, the crest was impeccable, Brett. It was not even like cracked or whatever. It was, it looked brand new. Takes me two weeks to ruin clothes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it took me two. So, all right. Raiders are minus two and a half in this game right now. Total 29 and a half. Oh, my God. Help what us. do you think of the game, Paul? So, first of all, if you play the total and you go under, I'm sorry to say you're a square. You cannot play into a four-point move. Open 33, 29 and a half. The train has left the station. Let it go. As far as the game itself, just understand one thing. There's a caveat here about preseason. It's not about talent. It's about motivation. Now, Doug Peterson went 5-0. and oh, his first year in the preseason in 2016 with the Philadelphia Eagles. And Josh McDaniel hasn't been very good, but McDaniel hasn't coached since 2010 when he was unceremoniously dumped in the in three quarters of the way through the season. And I got to feel he's chomping at the bit. So I'm going to give the motivation part of it to the Raiders. I think they want to win this game more, but – I think the Raiders are going to have issues on their offensive line. They got a guy who gave up eight sacks last year in Leatherwood. Uh, they lost Denzel Wood, uh, Denzel Good. Uh, I just don't know where this game's going to go because the Jacksonville Jaguar backups at quarterback are decent. We know Trevor Lawrence isn't playing, neither is ETN. But Jake Luton started a few games last year. And C.J. Beathard, I don't know if he's going to play, but he's not yes. bad either, so. I'm going to take think he a is. pass. Beathard's okay. out, I think, Paul. He's got the rip. Yeah, yeah Beathard's out. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a pass on this one, and I'm going to give you a play on the next Raider game, which I already stepped in on pretty good, <laughs> when they play the Minnesota Vikings a week later. And the reason is the Raiders will be home. They'll have a week in with that offensive line. They'll have the benefit of the game under their belt. And the Vikings are breaking in a new offensive line. They're going from zone to power, and that's a more difficult scheme. Uh, they got a new uh, offensive line coach, a new coach. So there's going to be some kinks to work out, and they're not going to expose the $35 million man in Kirk Cousins to the wrath of a poor offensive line. So what you're going to have here is a lot of Sean Mannion, who's thrown all of 110 passes in his NFL career over six years, and you're going to have Kellen Mond, who I didn't think very highly of at Texas A&M. So uh, the incentive is going to be with the Raiders, advantage Raiders, lay the two and a half, and wait till next game. Paul Bovey kicking it with us. You can follow him on Twitter, at Paul Bovey, nice and simple. Nothing fancy. Not, nothing, nothing, nothing fancy. Like Cam's wardrobe. <laughs> Keep it simple. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Same shirt. Just, yeah, just. <laughs> I do have different shades. Thank you. <laughs> what a, that, was a good, that was a good cut right there. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. Uh, so, yeah, very cool. all right, Paul, good stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll keep it rolling next week. And it'll be a full slate of preseason games next week. So we'll see what other angles present themselves as everybody okay. starts playing uh, ne next week. Always a pleasure, Paul. My pleasure. Take care, guys. Yeah, take so Paul Bovey. Uh, Paul Bovey uh, with us. Um, yeah, down to uh, to 29 and a half is total. Wow. That's low. That's low. Wow. Wow. 
You know what I love about Paul, Gabe? Like, me and you are, like, worried about bets, like, cashing in one day. I'll like to take the Raiders in the second preseason game. <laughs> He's amazing. He, hey, patience pays, baby. That's great. That was awesome. <laughs> love Paul. Uh, Giants, I'm looking it up right now. It's bothering me. Giants versus what, Bears. Bears? Yeah, 21 nothing. All right, so this is saying it was in Chicago. They won 21 nothing, But they also played, they played like maybe it was the year before. Uh, Bears versus the Giants rivalry history. I got to see this. It was 21. I swear to God, it was like really cold, like really, really windy. And I remember the total. I was like, wow, this is the lowest total I've ever seen. I was only like 16 yeah. years old at the time or whatever. But it was low, Cam. I think it might have been 31 and a half. Yeah. Like 30, like 31, 32, whatever. It was low, low. Uh, that Bear defense was just vicious, though, right? The only game they lost, right, was uh, the Dolphins beat them on the Monday Night Football. Correct. Game. And we asked Dick a little bit about it that night when we hung out with him. But I read um, I read Dick's book and uh, Buddy Ryan's book as well. There's a great, great story. Like, um, Mike Ditka, like, tried to physically attack Buddy Ryan at halftime. <laughs> Imagine, Cam, they're a 13-0 and football team, right? They're 13-0. and and yeah. basically, <laughs> Dick uh, at the Dan Marino was carving him up in the first half, and Ditka at the half like flipped out and said, "Listen, like we're gonna lose, and we we don't want to like we got to go undefeated here." And like, it was it's like the biggest regular season game ever because it was the Dolphins and their seventy two yeah. stuff and all that, and uh, and Ditka told him this this cover two is not working. He said the cover two is not working, and Marino is is killing us. And Buddy Ryan told him the cover two is effing work for the first 12 weeks, hasn't it? So they went back and forth, and it actually started a fight, like, in the room with the defense and the offense and everything. Like, when they won the Super Bowl, Cam, the defense carried Buddy Ryan off on their shoulders, not it. Yes, yeah, no, like, call. it was real. Like, that Bears team was, was fractured. Like, yeah. Buddy Ryan had a gang mentality about, like, F our offense even. Like, screw those guys. Like, like... They were like a F the world type of mentality. And that's why after it upset Ditka. And then they saw that and they put Ditka on his shoulders after. Right? But like the yeah. defense. And then after that, Buddy Ryan went and became the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. And yeah. then they played the Bears in the Fog Bowl, which was the, the foggiest game ever in the NFL. And I remember watching that live. It was crazy. You couldn't see anything. I, it was it was one of the classic the, the classic NFL games. There's a Sports Illustrated. I think it was the cover of Sports yeah, Illustrated, it. where the field goal is going up and no one knows if it's good, Ken. Like all the players <laughs> don't know. They're all just standing. And you see the the ref underneath in in this in in the haze. Never forget that Saturday afternoon, Chicago. Um, but history will be made again this year because we've got. I think arguably this is the most stacked the NFL has ever been with talent. And teams that could win the Super Bowl, Cam. It's going to be a crazy year this year in the National Football League. There is. The AFC though, is a bloodbath. If Buddy Ryan stepped up to Ditka, he'd get killed in that fight. Mike Ditka would put Buddy Ryan in an absolute oh. pretzel. He'd murder him. Buddy Ryan talked a lot for a game. Hey, Buddy was Ryan a was a pudgy dumpty, guy. Right? Talk, he Dicka, looked like Hubby Dumpty. An, yeah. yeah, Dicka's a killer. Dicka like, we even even when we met him. Like a bowling ball. Oh, yeah, he Ditka would have done anything. I, I'd take Ditka in a fight over Buddy Ryan with one arm. That's how strong Ditka is. Dick is amazing. Like, we met him in person, Gabe, when he was all purple and stuff. I was just looking at him going, man, this guy, when he was young, like an absolute bear of a man. is admits he's a thick everything guy, about Dick. him. Yeah, yeah he's, he's just, he's, yeah, like... he's, he's a killer. He's, he's a crusher, for sure. I like Dick. Guy. He's awesome. <laughs> Buddy, <laughs> Ryan. Buddy Ryan. Buddy, Buddy Ryan. He was a psycho. Right? Yeah. I remember the story, too. Buddy Ryan. Then the first game of the year they were playing, the first time they played the Cowboys, he put a bounty out on uh, Zendaya, the kicker of the Cowboys. He said before the game, I'll give anybody $500 that hurts their kicker. And so, so the first play of the game, he kicks off the game. Dude, like somebody on the Eagles, like murdered him, like went down and lit him up. After. And they asked Buddy Ryan after like, why would you guys go after the kicker? And he said, because this guy, I swear to God, this is Bovey sending me messages now. You're just on the air, Bovey. That's enough now. Like, God, 
That's why I don't like phones, Cam. I got to get a bat. Yeah. Like, I swear to God, I have the sound off. I have the sound yeah. off. Like, I hate that sound, too. I, I hate, oh, buddy, it, I, like, hate my, I hate time, my phone. It's like, it's like, stop. Like, whatever it is. Unless you're Paul's Claudia like a Schiffer constrictor. or you have $2 yeah. million dollars for me, <laughs> screw off. Exactly. Unless you're, unless you're a, a female or somebody with money, I'd prefer you not call it. Thanks. Well, I've had bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway, so, buddy, right. So, he said after, they said, why do you hate the Cowboys kicker so much? And it turned out, Cam, because he missed a field goal in the Pro Bowl the year before. And it cost the NFC the winning bonus. And Buddy oh, Ryan yeah. said, this son of a bitch cost me $20,000 because he missed a kick in the Pro Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> That's vindictive. That's yeah. real. Wow. <laughs> him and you know another mean guy? Your guy, Chuck Cecil. Remember him? He's mean too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chuck yeah, Cecil. Yeah. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full to circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And God being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line, and we have to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow! In game live, prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. The morning after. Orgy, what was your reaction to this law getting legalized? Took longer than it should have. The state lost out on a lot of money, but now no more do people need to go over, drive over to the states and the borders that are surround Massachusetts and shoot. I can go to Encore Casino with their beautiful sports book and have fun there. Watching games like I did for the Big Ten Football Championship last year. And also at the same wow. time, hey, bet prop bets. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Uh, I've just played my narrative for the under nine and a half. I suppose we should play the over for nine and a half. The reason why it would be set at nine and a half is one, I think some people are wagering that Sean Watson doesn't miss any time, right? You know, there would people be out there who say, look, if Watson's camp is appealing to get it down to zero games, then there's a chance that, you know, the Browns become like a 12 win team. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I think the Yankees did really nicely at the deadline, to be honest with you. I did too. The one that did not move the needle a little bit for me was the Montas deal. It's not a bad pickup by any stretch of the imagination, but I have a little bit of concerns about his shoulder going forward. He's already been on the IL a couple of times, and this is a team that desperately needs not just a starter, but a starter that will remain on the field for the rest of the year. It can't be Garrett Cole all year long. Nestor Cortez has hit a couple of snags. The Sports Grid Network. All right, well, you know what? We're on the clock here. There's only one baseball game coming up, Cam. It's 7 o'clock Eastern. Yeah, I know. A weird schedule today. What the hell these guys do? 640 and one? Seriously. Oh, wait a minute. They have, uh, they, they have nine afternoon games today. Nine. That's nuts. That's a lot of baseball. Some weird times tonight. Like, Cam, we got a game at 7. We got a game coming up at 707 or whatever the hell. 
7.40, and then the next one's not till 9.40. I know. No. Who are you taking, <laughs> Brewers or Pirates? I've got uh, – got to be honest, I didn't spend a lot of time on this. Actually, I, I looked at this game, and I, I the Brewers killed me last night in a parlay. I didn't want to, I didn't want to bet it. You know what I'm betting? I'm betting an MLS game. I took Charlotte yeah, yeah, minus was, 118. Yeah. It's up to minus 130. I bet it like earlier in the afternoon. Charlotte Big at home to rebound of- after losing 4 nothing to TFC. I, I'm on Charlotte. Big night of MLS tonight. Yep. Big night. All right, here, I'm going to go with uh, – we're gonna, we'll give you our MLS picks on the other side. We've got all these games starting at 7.30 Eastern time tonight. I'm going right for the uh, right for the alternative line here. See what I can get. Uh, club to foot to Montreal tonight. CF Montreal are playing good soccer this year. They really are. CF Montreal is not bad. That's what they go by. CF Montreal. I got to be honest with you. I, again, I'm done with like The impact anything. was better. I don't, I don't yes. know what the impact Yes. Because the impact exactly. worked in French and English too. Le, le impact. Yeah. It was the Thank impact. You. Like people in Montreal yeah. liked it. Like, I don't know. Why does everyone have to have that didn't need to be changed? FC and this and what other. Think of something else. There's something else we can do. Get a name. Charlotte FC and DC United. Exactly. Like enough. Like you guys can't come up with another DC United. Charlotte, new team, FC. Call yourself the Charlotte Checkers, for God's sakes. I don't care what you call yourself. Like an old AHL hockey team. Charlotte Charlotte FC. I don't care. Anything but FC. Get creative. God, it's annoying. (laughs) I really hate it. It's so stupid. Well, you said you look Galaxy, like white caps. Ta- that's good. Yeah, you're taking Charlotte, Char- FC. Char- Charlotte FC. Yeah, I am. Charlotte All FC. Right, we'll have more MLS and uh, <laughs> something else on the other side. Right, we'll find something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>